Do you remember when I used to share things that I do around the van? This year has been the year of changes and upgrades. I'm pretty much done and now I'm ready to share a lot of the stuff with you guys. This one is about the electrical system that I have upgraded. If you're new to the channel, my name is Stefan and I have been living in this van for about four years now. Everything that you're gonna see on this channel is fully converted by this guy right here. Let's get started. I have made some major upgrades to the electrical system throughout the years, but now I just think it's exactly where I want it to be. At the end of the video, I will share with you what it all powers, how I use it all. So make sure you stick around until the end. This is not going to be a professional how-to video. However, I did follow a lot of the guidelines to make sure that this van is running correctly. It's not gonna catch on fire. God forbid, it's very efficient and it works without even thinking about it. Another disclaimer is that I am going to talk about the things that I have used like batteries and solar panels. Important to note, I am not sponsored by any of these companies. So if you're interested to get some of the things that I've used for this electrical system, there are links down below, you can click those and I get a little bit of a kickback from Amazon. Let's start with the outside. On the front of the roof rack of the van, I have three 100 watt solar panels that come from Renogy and they are the smaller size. So I can fit three of them in a row, giving me a bit more space on the roof rack to add more things on top. Now I hooked these solar panels in parallel. The positive wire has a fuse between the MC4 connectors on the roof before it even gets into the van. Now to bring the wires from the roof inside the van, I use this waterproof wire gland that is especially made for RVs and boats. Once I have the wires inside, then they go through the wall back here. And that's the side that I have most of the electrical components underneath the bed. Note that I intentionally try to keep the wires as short as possible so I don't lose too much energy. However, I left some give because this is a moving vehicle. They're not super tight, but they're not super long. I've also installed a second outside plug for portable solar panels. Now this is a smaller plug, but it's very useful and it's also waterproof. Since I have the 300 watts of solar on the roof, why did I bother to get that second external plug? If you've been around my channel for a long time, you know that I go dispersed camping quite a bit. During the summer, for me to be able to be boondocking somewhere for a few days, I need to keep my vehicle in the sun so i keep on replenishing the power the problem with that is that the fridge keeps on running constantly for the most part even though the 300 watts of solar on the roof will bring more power than the fridge is able to consume i rather not have the fridge run the whole time and i rather not have the van be hot the whole time this is when the outside solar panels come into play now with the portable outside solar panels i can park the van in the shade run the portable solar panels in the sun to replenish power because these are portable solar panels i can angle them the right way i can move them around as the sun moves so i can get optimal energy back in now in scenarios where there's like 75 degrees fahrenheit outside and i'm camping and i'm using a lot of power putting the van in the sun also hooking up the external solar panels then i can get a massive amount of energy back in the van very quickly now before i get into the inside of the van and all the electrical components there i want to mention that i also charge my batteries while driving with the alternator which is my main way of charging the battery super fast now the brains of this whole operation that i have going on over here is my charge controller so get ready for this because it's a mouthful it's a 12 volt 50 amp dc 2 DC MPPT charge controller from Renogy. This is a very smart unit. It obviously manages all the power that comes from the solars, from the alternator, from the external solar panels without me even thinking about it. Its main goal is to charge as efficiently as possible while keeping the system 
safe. With the alternator charging, I just have negative and positive wire that comes from the battery of the car. And then it runs on the side of the van underneath the steps to the charge controller. Underneath the hood on the positive wire, I have another fuse. For example, if I'm driving and it's sunny outside, the charge controller is going to try to protect that alternator so it doesn't get stressed too much, get as much as it can from the solar and then pull the rest from the alternator. Now, sometimes it'll only do solar, sometimes it does both. It all varies on how the system is acting at the moment. All that stuff is done by the charge controller and it's very seamless all right on to the next item this is by far the biggest upgrade that i've done to the van that's adding another battery i used to have one 100 amp battle born lithium battery now i have two double the power which i'm super excited about because these batteries are not cheap let me explain i know there are many types of companies that are making lithium batteries and they just keep on popping up all over the place so it's important to do the research the few reasons why i stuck with battleborn is because they are tried and tested they are made here in the us you can call customer service and they'll help you rather than buy a company that's from overseas that you can never get to their customer service it has a bms system what that does is kind of keeps the batteries happy if it gets too cold if it gets too hot and in extreme weather either cold or hot they even shut off until they realize they're back into regular temperature so they don't get damaged and the reason why i went with this company and lithium is because they're expensive <laughs> i'm obviously kidding battleborn does have a very good reputation and lithium is in the long run a better buy yes initially it's expensive that's why i bought one and i didn't buy two for the most part for my needs at the beginning it did just fine they have a longer battery life they are lighter they are able to charge all the way up and drain all the way down without getting damaged they also have longer charging cycle at this time i'm not really sure what the prices are for batteries because sometimes they'll have sale but they're around 900 dollars each which seems like a lot of money but they're kind of in the middle of the price market there are battery companies that are just like it they're the same price there are companies out there that are made overseas or they just don't have a brand name yet and they try to sell them on a discount site which is perfect if they have a good warranty that way you don't get stuck with something that you can't exchange then you have the really powerful ones that are like you know like volta which you'll find in like storyteller overland and other rv manufacturers and those systems are twenty thousand dollars plus however people love those systems because they're so powerful i'm not quite there yet <laughs> not many people talk about this but that's kind of important when you hook up a battery most people will hook them up in parallel but they'll put both terminals on one of the batteries however what happens with that system is that the wires that are hooked up to the first battery kind of use the first battery first once the first battery is drained then it starts pulling power from the second battery until then the second battery is just like oh you're good first battery you're good okay let me know when you're ready what i've done is they're still hooked up between each other in parallel but the positive terminal is from one battery the negative terminal is from the other battery that way when it pulls power it pulls power from both of them and then when it recharges it recharges them both at the same time so you don't get the first battery just getting used doing its cycles stages you know draining replenishing while the other battery is just sitting still doing nothing unless you need it now from the positive wire of the second battery very close to it i have a shut off switch and then Past that, I have another fuse. I also installed a kill switch from the solars coming to the system. If I need to work on anything, then the solars are not live. Directly from the negative wire of the first battery, I have a Victron smart shunt with Bluetooth. It can monitor so I know what goes in, what goes out, how much power I'm using. It has an app on the phone that I can see exactly what's going on with the power system this shunt also has a small wire that i hooked up to the car battery that also monitors my car battery now it's important to know when it shows the wattage or the current that comes in the van it's the average for example if i'm in the sun with 300 watts of solar but then i have my fridge running and then i have my laptop charging and i have other things going and i'm thinking oh my god i'm only pulling in 20 watts or whatever it is that's because the other things are running so it's only showing what you're pulling in or maybe you're not pulling enough then it's going to show minus enough of the shunt let's move on to the next stuff 
Ah. Most of my system runs on 12 volt. However, if I want to charge my laptop fast and use the brick that it comes with or run my microwave, then I need more than 12 volt. So underneath the bed, I upgraded to a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter made specifically for 12 volt from Renogy. There were a few keywords in there. One, pure sine wave. It means if there's spikes in the system, which happens, and this is capable of 4,000 watts, those spikes are handled very smooth, which is more efficient, and it also protects the system better. Two, this inverter is actually specifically made for 12 volt, not 24, 12 volt. I know I'm gonna get some slack from some of you in the comments that are telling me that if I'm trying to run a microwave because it's a 12 volt system rather than a 24 volt system, but this inverter is made by Renogy for 12 volt. It's efficient, it's very quiet, it draws just enough power that it needs without hurting the system or the wiring or anything else that I have here. All the wiring and all the components that I have here, they're actually used for a 12 volt system. They even make a 3000 watt 12 volt inverter if you want to go bigger. For the fuses, I upgraded to this Blue Sea Safety Hub 150. This hub can support ANL fuses, which are the bigger fuses for more power hungry things. It also has slots for the regular smaller car fuses. It also has an integrated bus bar. Now this thing's really biffy. It saves on space. I highly recommend it. I upgraded from a fuse box that only had the small fuses. I still have that only because the safety hub doesn't have enough slots for all the switches that I use in here and all the USB ports and all that stuff that I'll get into in a second. However, if I were to start from scratch, I would probably try to just use the safety hub because it's really, really beefy. <laughs> The older smaller fuse box that I have is still powered by the safety hub. Now a few reasons why I made the upgrade to the battery, to the inverter, obviously to the wiring, is because there were a few problems along the way over the years. One, in the summer when it was always hot with the 100 amp battery, I would find myself always at zero the next day. It would drain the whole battery throughout the night because I had all this stuff running without obviously having any power coming in. You would think during the summer because I would get all the sun, I wouldn't have that problem. I would have more of that problem in the winter because I wouldn't get that much sun. The truth is, when it gets super hot in here, everything has to run. The vents have to run nonstop. Even at night, the fridge has to run nonstop, even at night, which for me, it drains 100 amp hours very quickly. Two, I always had to be very mindful of when I use the energy, how much I drive, how much I replenish. It was one of those things that I had to plan to make sure that I don't drain the battery. Now, with the second battery, I was able to install a microwave. Why a microwave? <laughs> if you guys have been on my channel for the longest time, you know that I love to cook in my videos. I make food all the time, which is not gonna change. I'm still going to make food. However, when I do cook, I cook a bit more than one meal because if I go through all the trouble, I'm not gonna make just one meal. Sometimes I used to, but now I really don't have to. If I have leftovers from the day before, I can reheat it really quick. Use one plate for the most part, which means very little cleanup. And it's very, very helpful when I'm in the city. When I'm running gun and going places and I have to do errands, I don't really have time to stop and start chopping stuff and cooking like all these crazy meals, clean up a bunch of stuff and lose a bunch of time when I'm running around. So what I found without the microwave in these scenarios is go eat out, you know, spend a bunch of money or just go to fast food and eat very unhealthy. If I know I'm gonna be in the city, I can go as far as like cooking for the whole week, throw stuff in the microwave, run and gun, eat quickly and clean up and go. Many of you are gonna think it's not worth it. It takes way too much power for a small system like mine. However, if you've ever used the microwave, the microwave gets only used like a minute or two. In my scenario, five minutes tops. And what I've seen through my usage so far is that I lose one percentage of the battery system Per minute. I run the microwave usually at lunch when I'm getting power in. It's usually not a problem anyways, even at night. That's a small price to pay to be able to use a microwave and use free energy that I'm getting in anyways, rather than go spend money 
on outside food because I don't have time to cook for myself. As promised at the beginning of the video, I'm gonna share with you what this whole system powers. On either side of the van, I do have USB plugs. From these 12 volt USB plugs, I power my phones. Yes, I have two phones, one that I'm filming with right now and another one that I use for everyday use. My really old iPad, which I just kind of use for entertainment nowadays. My laptop, which I use for everything from editing to just managing my website and all that stuff. I have a drone, which I have three batteries for, usually only charge when I'm driving to a spot and I know I'm gonna be using my drone. So by the time I get there, the drone is nice and charged. I have a cheap outside speaker for when I'm camping, just to have some music in the background. I gotta change that thing it's getting old. I have filming lights. There's one in my face right now and one back there. I have these string lights that are always plugged in the USB. <laughs> a small little fan which is also portable. There's a battery inside here and I can move it around the van because it has a, a little clamp. I also keep a few small power banks so if I need to be on the go, hiking somewhere away from the van. I'll uh, use one of these or take one of these with me. I also have a gimbal and that needs to be charged as well. Last but not least, the big things, I have a 12 volt fridge that is always plugged in. And it just, you know, obviously runs off and on. That's my biggest 12 volt draw power item. And I also have a 12 volt diesel heater. Yes, a diesel heater does need electricity. It doesn't need a lot, but it does need uh, electricity to run. It's not like those Mr. Buddy things where you just use the propane bottle, then you don't need any electricity except to like ignite it. For 110 volts, I use my laptop when I'm editing because it works better. The microwave once in a while when I'm trying to get a quick meal in. I also have a bunch of Ryobi tools with a lot of batteries. <sighs> there was a lot to go over on this video, even though it doesn't seem like a lot. I also do talk a lot, so my apologies in advance. I'm hoping that you got something out of it. I'm hoping you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, don't forget to leave them in the comments below. Check out this other video up here if you wanna see more van life stuff. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.